Welcome to another moment in the Word. Are you going through a tough time right now? Are there some difficulties that are going on in your life? And at the same time, are you also sensing that you're not alone? That there are others that are around you that are also going through hardships? And how is it that you can then, if you're a believer, care for and minister to, express compassion to those who are going through difficulties also? How can you do that? Well, that's precisely what we're looking at. In this passage, we're continuing in Matthew chapter 14, and we're looking at verses 15 and 16. And it reads like this. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, This is a desert place, and the time is now late. Send the multitudes away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves some food. But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart. Give them to eat. Oh, wow, that sounds rather direct, doesn't it? Well, let's look at the context and let's see if we can understand what Jesus is saying and why he was so direct with his disciples. Remember that the passage just prior to this said that Jesus looked at the multitudes, at the crowd, and he had compassion. Why did he have compassion? Well, he had compassion because as we find in Mark's gospel, and it's in chapter 6, and in verse 34, he had compassion toward them because they were as sheep, not having a shepherd. And so Jesus is in the process of training his apostles, his disciples, to be shepherds. They needed to learn something, that you don't just send people away when they have a need. And so consequently, they needed themselves to receive the grace of God, that they can give the grace then to those that they would have compassion on. Now, remember also the context for this whole passage, and that is that Jesus has heard that John the Baptist has died. How do you respond when someone that you love, someone that you're close to, maybe a relative, because remember, John was the cousin of our Lord. Remember that Mary and Elizabeth were related and that's how they're related to each other. John dies. And John was only about six months older than Jesus physically. And so if that be the case, Jesus is grieving. And when you're grieving, what do you want to do? You want to get alone, don't you? And that's where Jesus is, is going now. He's going to a solitary place. The word desert doesn't mean a desert with sand dunes. It means it's a solitary place. It's a place where there aren't a lot of people. And when you're going through a time of sorrow and grief, you want to be alone. And there's nothing wrong with that. But Jesus, when he goes alone and he has his disciples with him, and they're also grieving, because they also knew John. John was the forerunner. He was the one that was saying, make way the, the straight path. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. The Messiah has come. Behold the Lamb of God. And they too are grieving. And so now Jesus has compassion out of his grief. Now I want to remind you again, as we saw yesterday, that that word compassion is in the passive voice. And passive means that he has received. You see, passive is the opposite of active. Active, I'm doing. Passive voice means that I have received. And it's the grace that I have received that then enables me to be compassionate. And the word compassion is actually made up of two Latin words, com, which means together, passe, which means to suffer, to suffer together. And now we have these, and it's evening. It's evening when the disciples are making this observation, and they're the ones that are saying, Lord, it's evening. Well, what does that mean? Evening means the stores are closing. And we know that this is even now more important because John tells us it's Passover and the stores are closing. And so if these people are going to have anything to eat, send them away. Oh, it's real compassionate, isn't it, to tell somebody, hey, you've been with us all day. Jesus has been teaching. He's been healing. He's been caring for you. But now you're on your own. How is that a shepherd? You see what shepherds do? 
Shepherds care for their sheep. They spend time with their sheep. And for a Jew to understand the evening is not the end of the day, it's the beginning of the day. Remember in creation, it was the evening and the morning. You see, we begin with rest. We start with a fresh day by going to sleep and resting so that we then can continue the next day. And so now it's evening. The disciples' manner of dealing with a problem is to say, what are our resources? What are our abilities? And maybe you're a pastor. Maybe you're an evangelist. Maybe you're a, a ministry leader. Maybe you're a father. Maybe you're a mother. But you're looking at the needs of your family for the flock that you care for, and you're saying, what can we do? I, I remember that Jesus he speaks to Philip. And Philip has already done a little bit of checking among the disciples, and he says, we only have 200 denarii, and that's a, a 200 days wage between all of us, and it's not enough. It's not enough to feed this crowd of 5,000 men, not counting their wives, not counting their children. Could be 20, could be 30,000 people. Certainly, that's not enough. But what is Philip doing? He's looking at his own resources. What are you doing? Are you looking at your own resources? And now we find that it's evening, and the disciples said, send the multitudes away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves some food. The stores are about to close. Well, what does Jesus say? Jesus said unto them, they need not depart. They've been with us all day. And besides that, Jesus has compassion on them because they are sheep without a shepherd. And that's the nature of every single one of us as we come into this world. As you look at the multitudes that are in the world today, and it doesn't matter what country you're in, it doesn't matter how materially prosperous it is or how poor. The issue is where's the shepherd? And remember, this is Passover. And what happens at Passover? Passover is the time in which God had provided the lamb. And remember, it's the blood of the lamb that he looks at the doorpost and lentils and says, I will pass over. The death angel, the judgment passes over. And that's the beginning for Israel. Three days later, they cross over the Red Sea. They sing the song of Miriam. They sing the song of redemption. They go to then Mount Horeb. They go to the place where they receive the law and the birth of Israel takes place. And then for the next 40 years, what happens? God provides. God provides. He provided manna from heaven. They have nothing. If you're looking at your physical resources, you'll limit God. Faith is required in order to be compassionate. It requires not what you have, but what you have received of God that you give to another. And now I remind you that the word compassion means to suffer with, but the word comfort is also two Latin words. Calm means together. Fortes, which we get our English word fort from, means strength. That we also are able to comfort others with the comfort we have received. Again, it's in the passive voice. I receive comfort from the Holy Spirit, who is my comforter, that I might be able to comfort others also. And when are you comforting? Not when you are yourself in a place where, oh, it's easy, I feel rested, I feel wonderful, no problems in my life. No, you're going through hardship yourself. But you're finding your strength in the Lord. And in your strength, you're able to strengthen others. Because your strength isn't of yourself, your strength is of Him. So Jesus says, don't send them away. You give them to eat. He is challenging them to do the impossible, isn't it? It is always God's command to do the impossible. 
It was not possible that Peter could walk on water. It was not possible that Lazarus could come out of a grave. It's not possible that you can love your enemies. And it's not even possible that you can meet another person's need. But God can do it through you. And he does it through you in your own distress, in your own time of grieving or sorrow or challenge or temptation or weakness. God delights in using that which is nothing to bring to nothing those who think there's something. God wants to bless you today, but not just bless you for you, to bless you so that you might be a blessing to others. I pray that God richly blesses you today. Let's pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this great passage that is not a transition, but in itself is a great lesson. And it helps us, it reminds us, it, it challenges us to, Father, depend on you and to learn that it is faith that's required even for compassion. And we thank you, Father, that you take our desert places and you make an Eden out of them. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen.